Welcome to our morning inspiration, Wednesday, March 20, 2024. I hope we are doing well this morning and I pray that the Lord will continue to be with you and may he give you peace today. Our reading today comes to us from Isaiah chapter 5 and we will read verse 11 and 20 to 24. Verse 11. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue until night, till wine inflame them. 20. Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward, and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. 24 and last. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the shaft, so their roots shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Amen. We give God thanks again this morning for His holy words, and this is a very compact passage this morning. Isaiah of chapter 5 but I only choose to read a few verses from it but on your own time I will advise you that you go and read it the Lord has a lot to say to us here in this passage it speaks a lot about how proud man is and how they exalt themselves and the kind of disregard that they have towards God and the things of God. But as the scriptures say that pride goeth before a fall. And when you are too proud, God has a way of humbling us and putting us back in our place. Now the Bible say, woe unto them that love strong drink or wake up early in the morning and drink strong drink right up until night. Now, there's a number of things I can say in regards to this. And I will start out by saying that first, it is not good for your body. Be it from a spiritual standpoint or from a biological standpoint. It is not good for your body. All the toxic in your body, you're consuming, destroying your organ. So even if... You don't want to stop drinking because you don't believe in God or you don't believe in this old Christianity thing. Out of respect for your health, you should not drink. And I know there are several excuses you can give as to the reason why you drink. Oh, you know your limit and you know you have been drinking for years and nothing has happened to you and all the excuses we know them all but from a spiritual standpoint let's take it there now god is saying that it is a danger to your own self when you consume drink because from what i know personally a lot of time folks who drink is like they become possessed after a while and just imagine somebody drinking from morning till night. When that person get drunk, he no not know himself anymore or she don't know herself anymore. Your body becomes numb and you have no sense of yourself anymore. It's like, you know, you just into this black hole all alone. And I know you're going to tell me that well, you drink and you never get drunk, but that doesn't negate the effects. It doesn't take away what is happening to your body when you drink. You may think that you're not get, getting drunk, but your organs, 
your poor organs, they are crying out for help. But you're not feeling the effect yet. But you will sooner or later. That's the reality of your choice. You can't escape it no matter how you try. Right? And so we are warned that we should not put these kind of toxic things in our body. Furthermore, the scripture tells us that our bodies are the temple of God. And you cannot defile and pollute the temple where God dwells. And if you want God to dwell in you, you cannot consume these things. So you must not smoke and you must not drink. Not only from a healthy standpoint, but also from a spiritual standpoint. In the chapter, it also speaks about those who build their houses close together. And we can immediately identify an example of that. The cities. Do you realize how the living quarters are in the cities? Man, you step out of your house and step into somebody else's house. It's not the ideal way to live. Houses must be apart. You remember a few years ago? Houses were a good couple of steps away from each other. So you couldn't step out of your house and step into somebody's house. No. You'd have to walk a little bit. But as the cities grow and as these community grows, and they turn into towns and they turn into cities. This is what happened. And then man put up skyscrapers and they beat them chests. Oh, we build this. God can't talk to us. Look at what we did. Yeah. So it's not even so much alone that we build cities, you know. It's the fact that we become so proud of ourselves. We beat our chests in God's face. So we are telling God that look what we do by ourselves. We don't need you. We build in skyscrapers. We make planes to fly. We build big boats that can sail on water. So what can you do for us that we can't do for ourselves? So this is a kind of attitude that we have. And this makes God very angry. So men build city as a way of strengthening their forces. Confederating together. So the intention is that the binding of these strong societies or these big cities would give strength to that city. Maybe to ward off foes or to show who have the most strength or whatever it may be. But in most cases, if not all cases, it's to carry out their own personal agenda. And if you look at the world today, you can see that. Because you have countries who, the bigger the city, the more advanced they become, the more weapons they create. Weapons that can wipe out cities in seconds. Now you tell me, if that is not hate, I don't know what hate is. Because why would you make such a weapon to use against somebody else? All in the name of protecting yourself or so you say but in your heart you know that's not the truth there's no need for war but sin this is the result of it that's a story for another time so if left to themselves man will surely destroy this earth but you can read the chapter and see what i'm saying because the lord has a mouthful to give and I pray that we will really listen and so we don't feel the wrath of God because of our disobedience. And that is why he, he gave the message to Isaiah to warn the people. And this message is for us today too because we are in the same boat. We are doing the very things that the Israelites did. So they did not learn from their fathers and we are not learning from them. And we continue the trend. We disregard God's law. So you realize today that the world wants nothing to do with God. Governments want nothing to do with God and to do with Christianity. And if they do mention anything about Christianity and about the church, is only to advance their own personal agenda is not really to lead people back to god 
and God is very upset with us. And he said that his wrath will be poured out upon us. Read the chapter. Read the chapter. It's a very serious warning. It's in chapter 5 here. It has a lot of things that we need to understand. And we need to take the lessons and change our ways. Our sudden destruction is going to come upon us. The Bible talk about the fact that, you know, man have reached the stage where they call good evil and evil good. Do you see how evil we have become? How is it that you are going to exalt wickedness and then you are going to downplay righteousness? Can't you see that's wickedness? Your heart is blind. That's a very serious state to be in. When you look at the world today, when you do something wrong, it's like you have just made a great accomplishment and deserve to be praised. That's how it come across. And that's what is happening in our world today. And when you do something that is actually right and good and moral, people look at you like, what's the matter with this weirdo? He doesn't fit in. We need to get rid of him somehow. That is why it is very difficult for people who actually want to do the right thing to strive in places like government, leadership and all of those places because the level of corruption that, that is in these kind of institutions is beyond your wildest imagination. And so even if you as a person want to do some good, you can't do it because what if you try keep in mind that they're gonna try to get you out somehow if it's even into a pine box they're gonna get you out somehow so we are not living in us in normal times everything is backwards the heart of man is desperate the wicked people are more drawn towards evil rather than good and it seems not to bother and face anybody only a few of us crying out and no matter how loud we cry because we are so few in numbers the crowd is drowning out our little voices but God is not asleep God is not asleep and you hear what he said in verse 24 he made a very serious proclamation he said what therefore as the fire devoured the stubble and the flame consumed the shaft, so their root shall be as rottenness and their blossom shall what? Go up as the dust so it won't last forever. One day it will come to an end. God is going to put a stop to all of this madness. And why is going to put a stop to all of this madness? Because of an important factor. They have what? Cast down the law of God. They have disregarded his commandments. And because of the disrespect that they are showing to God. God is going to what? Destroy them. Do you, no, do you believe that God wants to destroy anybody? Of course not. He wants us to come to our senses and to turn from our evil ways. But we are so bent and going after our own way that we not even willing to hear the messengers of the Lord. We are not willing to hear the word of the Lord. And that is why you find a lot of people, they say that they don't want to hear nothing from no preacher. They don't want to hear nothing from nobody. They don't want to hear about no God. They don't want to hear nothing that have the element of God in it. Because what? It interrupt their life and their plan. Remember what they did to the prophet? Remember Jeremiah? Remember Isaiah? Was it Isaiah that they saw it into? Come on, man. Do you think that they are going to treat us any different in this world that we are living in today? We need to wake up. We need to understand that 
we are not living in some pleasant time i know it seems like you know it's peace and safety you know but <laughs> sudden destruction is gonna fall because what man heart is so desperately wicked and man don't feel like they should be accountable for the things that they are doing and so we just do as we please we are selfish we are unkind we are just oh we are not the same people that god made in the garden of eden we have transformed dramatically like some of those horror movies we watch something totally different like out of a nightmare i never imagined that human being who god was so proud of when he made us could fall to such a state we have surely fallen we fallen fallen far 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 but in spite of all of this god gives the invitation calling us back so there's a way of escape from this destruction but only if we repent and i pray that as we read the word of god and as we take the lessons that he gives to us that we will not let them pass through one ears and go to the next but we will really take them and we will really allow them to transform us into who we were always meant to be a child of god truly representing him and his kingdom he called us out of darkness into what is marvelous light let us walk as children of light amen so may god continue to bless you and keep you and may his face and his peace continue to shine upon you in jesus name amen